And my favorite past controllers, mouse and keyboard, man. That's the intro. That's my, that's that's my joke. <laughs> that's my joke uh, about that. Just, uh, I need my street cred. Video game controllers. There's kind of been a lot of like controllers that have been coming out or that are sort of on the horizon. What are some of your favorite controllers from the past? Gotta be the GameCube controller. Mm. I don't know why uh, it's so oddly shaped and not the Wave Bird either, but just the regular traditional, you know, indigo blue. I think it's just from so many years of playing Smash Bros. Melee that it just, I'll come to adapt to any controller. The original Xbox controller, uh, you know. The Duke? The yeah, Duke. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Basically, I can play on anything if I'm forced to, and I find that actually the longer I spend, it's kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. It doesn't matter how bad the controller is, but if the game that I end up playing for hours and hours is great, I'll come to love that controller almost sort of vicariously. If the scientists in uh, whatever underground facility who work on these controllers would say, oh, well, actually, that's not superior. Uh, you know, this other one is much better. You want to have this offset and, you know, this that trigger needs to be faster. The, the C buttons make no sense. It's, you know, completely subjectively is my favorite. I've just, I, I suffer with the controllers. I don't know, when we first had a Nintendo, my big brother was uh, of the violent type of temperament when it came to dying too many times in Ninja Gaiden and would, would hold the controller in a, in a fist grip and smash it on the basement floor. We had a lot of shattered controllers and none of it was ever my fault, which felt nice. However, the controllers were always broken, so I was subjected to a lot of broken controllers. And then going into later with the Nintendo 64. See, I, I played Smash Bros on the Nintendo 64 with some people who were very passionate about it. And that analog stick on the N64, that springy analog stick, would always be busted and clacking you know, against the side of the... Right. The, right? And the GameCube as well. I played Smash Bros on the GameCube. We called it Smash Bros back then. Um, I played Smash Bros on the GameCube and it was subjected to a lot of broken A buttons. A lot of th that A button was, and I guess is, because people still play that game with that controller, that A button is pretty flimsy. Yeah. Now the Wave Bird, it's much better. However, you can't play Smash Bros. Well, with, that's the, without a without a wire, wire right? and that's the great thing about those particular games and those particular controllers because they had such well-known weak points that whoever was the best at that game automatically had to play with the the broken controller. Exactly, as a, a sort of built-in level playing field. See, I don't I don't like that. I want the controller to be good. I want the controller to be sweet. And every console comes out with a controller. I liked the Duke. The Duke was good, because that thing was good, man. I think the first time I played with the Duke was playing Halo. And I remember thinking okay. like, oh wow, this is cool. Like, it feel, this feels interesting. But then the next generation for the 360, that for me is my personal favorite controller like, to date. I just I feel like it, it just it kind the of- The original 360 controller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just felt so good to just like hold in your hands. Though, when you want to talk about all time best video game controllers, and I, I consider myself a sort of a connoisseur because everything makes me uncomfortable. I've never worn a pair of socks that I like, for example. Uh, the, the one game controller that I had zero complaints about in all of history was the original PlayStation 1 controller, not the DualShock. The original PlayStation 1 controller is built like a complete tank. And if you look into this, it is made of steel and it is so heavy and bulky and dense compared to any other controller of that era. Now they literally make them out of corn. They literally make the controllers out of, out of vegetable plastic, out of corn husk. Same thing that your MTA transit card is made out of. So, I mean, of the current sort of offerings, what are your favorites at the moment? Xbox One Elite controller. Damn. It's just, just the Xbox One Elite controller. Number two, Xbox One regular controller. Huh. Uh, PlayStation 4 controller is made out of corn. It's made out of, it's literally made out of corn. And uh, yeah, man, if you don't hate the PlayStation 4 controller, try developing a four player game. We went through 46 controllers in three years. The Bluetooth sucks. The, 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 the controller has so many things that it's doing all at once. The console is listening for all sorts of signals from the controller 
analog and touchpad, and speaker, light bar, all this so, stuff. I will say, the speaker and light bar, I hate them. Yeah, I don't need them. Uh, I've gone through two PS4 controllers now, but I will say I really appreciate the touchpad. And I never would have guessed that I would have, but... What are you using it? So I played a couple hundred hours of The Witcher 3, and it is the uh, shortcut to just go straight to the map. So yeah. instead of toggling through the menu system, it basically is you know a macro for... It's, it's your select and start button. Right now. And yeah, it's, right? right? I mean, it, it, it's like that, except they're just bigger, easier to touch. And there's also the little scrub motions that work out pretty well. Like, I mean, I don't mind that touchpad as an idea. However, it's made of corn. So what about you? What are your, what are your favorites of, of the current? I don't have any. Uh, the Switch Pro controller is perfectly fine. Very Xbox good. controller is, is perfectly fine. Uh, DualShock 4 obviously has problems. I have this weird off-brand Xbox controller that is bright green and slightly too small, but I love it for playing PC games. I think mostly just because it's green. And I will say that one of my biggest disappointments is just how few options there are for the PS4 controller. Because yeah. I would love to just get an Elite yeah. and play everything on Xbox, but I play most things on PS4 because that's just kind of how this console generation has gone. Exactly. And, you know, I would love to have something hot pink or bright green or electric yellow and just, you know. Ooh, that, now we're talking. The same way, like, I, well, my favorite thing about the Switch is my Splatoon colored Joy-Con. Oh yeah. yeah, those are sweet. You got those, right? I got no. I got the arms Joy-Con. Oh, I love arms those. Ones, yeah. I, I would buy them. so many Joy-Con, even though I hate the Joy-Con. Yeah. Again, because I think yeah. it's it's one of the few places left where you can actually have color with video game consoles. Nintendo was always great about doing this back in the day, but now it's like they're all black boxes. I need something. They got they got more colors. Like, yeah. why aren't there more colors of it? I want more Joy-Con colors. I want to go crazy with it. I was so excited about the the, the idea of the Joy-Con being able to like detach your left and right hands. I think that's still a really cool idea. But there is still something really weird about the Joy-Cons for me that I can't really pinpoint. They just, they're so small. They're so small, yeah. They're very, very tiny. They feel very dainty. I do like the Switch Pro Controller, though. I, I love no. the Switch Pro Controller. I forgot to mention that. It's beautiful. D-pads, beautiful buttons are good. The right action, they're just, just high enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, like I guess, it. looking forward, are there any controllers that maybe have just come out or that are like on the horizon that you have your eyes on? Well, on the horizon, I have my eyes on. Uh, Sony's got to make a, an Elite controller. And they've sponsored the making, and they've officially licensed a few other Elite controllers. There's the Razer one, there's the that other brand one. Uh, there's the Scuff one that was just announced today. There's like a, a fully, from the ground up, Scuff made controller. And it's like, it's $200 for the, the version that's wireless or wired. Uh, it looks really nice. It looks like it's a really good controller. It almost looks like they just copied the Xbox One Elite controller, which I'm fine with. I really think controllers, man, you need one. You can't play the game without a controller. We tried that with the Microsoft Kinect and it didn't work. Everyone was like, I gotta have something in my hands. So that's, that's why we need controllers. And you gotta accept people now with their 4K TVs and their sound systems and buying their DLC, competing against 99 other players regularly in these video games. People wouldn't mind buying a $150 controller. And every blog post is like, well, you believe this crazy $150 controller? I saw people on Twitter, the scuff one that was announced today, people were like, would you believe that it's a $200 controller? It's like, I don't know, yeah. man, it's, I, you know. Well, especially now that you can play, you, I mean, all these controllers double on PC. Exactly. Uh, they're all compatible with Steam at this point. And, I mean, people have been decking out uh, gaming keyboards and mice for decades. For years. And oh so I think that's the next step is to see, to, to treat it as some high-end thing where, as opposed to being dependent on a console manufacturer to, you know, become an expert in creating this peripheral, yeah. license it out and, you know, have some quality control, but allow other companies who excel at that already to give you all sorts of options. I mean, the great thing about the Duke is, having all these different buttons and allowing you to play a game in a different way in the same way that, you know, an MMO mouse is gonna have a ton of side buttons. You don't need that for every game, but, you know, Xbox now has the accessibility controller that they worked on to, you know, 
have these giant buttons that uh, and and you know integrate with all different kinds of other instruments so that basically it's like there's all different ways you can interact with a piece of plastic yeah. that it can take the stimulus from you and then translate that into something on the screen and there's no reason it just has to look like you know Batman's battering that exactly I'm, I'm most excited about that Xbox accessibility controller just because like you just mentioned it, how modular it is and how many things can get plugged into it and sort of moving away from the notion that like these games have to be designed around two analog sticks two triggers and like four face buttons on on each side something really cool about that in, in, in my opinion I just like I want to see some weird shit happen I want to see like I don't know. I want to see some. I mean, I'm all about the rhythm games and stuff, but I want to see some some weird stuff happening with, with the pop and music controller. That was a good controller. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it only worked with pop and music. <laughs>